Hmm. Uh, there's a lot of water usage in kitchens of ordinary homes. A difference of opinion has come between the technical people as to whether the water coming from a kitchen sink is grey water or black water. It's our experience that it's better to treat it as black water rather than grey water. Now, one of the simple tricks in the kitchen is to use a shower head instead of a tap because the shower head spreads water instead of putting it in volume and therefore consumes less water. In a kitchen you usually use a detergent bar to clean the dishes like so and so therefore the treatment system will have to take care of the detergent coming. It will also have to take care of the oil and grease coming out and the rice, dal and other carbonaceous material coming out. Let's see how that is done. Now we go outside the kitchen to see the treatment unit come. first thing we need is a solid strap and an oil and grease strap. This is how an oil and grease strap looks. Water is coming in from the kitchen sink and it's caught here in a baffle where you can see the grease floating and that's held back by this particular plate. And the second additional chamber also handles a bit more of the grease. The solids are deposited at the bottom of these two chambers. Then you have a T-joint pipe which picks up water halfway below the surface water level so that no grease is picked up and that brings it into a three chamber unit again this three chamber unit has a bubbler that we put in from an aquarium so that oxygen is put in and the dissolved oxygen level goes higher in it this treats the water very well because the organic bacteria grow and eat up all the carbon material inside this water Water then comes out of the oil and grease trap into a sand filter. But before that, this is how an oil and grease trap looks. That's the drawing, that's the water coming in from the kitchen. And the explanation as we gave there before. The oil and grease being held here, the carbon materials being deposited here. Water being taken in into the last three chambers without any oil or grease and without any carbonaceous material. But then dissolved oxygen being put in through air bubblers to improve the water quality and then it comes out to the sand planted filter. Once it comes to the sand planted filter, you have sand here and plants growing. This is vetiver. The roots of the vetiver go into the water and take away the phosphates from it. The phosphate is coming from the detergent. This is how a planted sand filter looks. Water comes in from an oil and grease trap, comes in into this particular root zone where sand is packed. Once the water emerges from the root zone and the packed sand, it goes to a pond. That's the pond there. This pond water can be used for landscaping purpose. One of the indicators that we have is to put fish inside it. The fish not only tell us what the water quality is, but also remove mosquito larvae and bacteria from it. Uh, not bacteria, but mosquito larvae from it. If the pond fills up, there's an overflow pipe. The overflow pipe leads into a recharge well outside. So the excess water is put back into the ground. This way you take care of the kitchen water, put it to productive use. This water can be used for plants and excess water recharged into that buffer. A good oil and grease trap and planted sand filter will ensure that about 100 liters of water from the kitchen is put to productive use in the house every day.